Welcome everyone. It's Leah Guy with the Modern Sage Podcast. As always, I'm very happy that you're here. We have a fantastic show for you today. Before we get to our special guest, I want to remind everyone listening, you can go to my website, leahguy.com and check out all of my courses, the recent podcast, events coming up and more, my books and so forth. There's links there as well as social media. If you're on social media a lot, follow myself, Leah, the Modern Sage, and our guest today so you can find out about the upcoming promos of when this show will be live. And don't forget, you can watch these episodes on YouTube as well as listen to any uh, on any of your favorite podcast streamers. Now, today, we're talking about a little bit of a different topic, not really out of the line of the Modern Sage content, but we have a guest that one might not normally think would be on this show. He's a gold medal winning Olympic skater. He's an author, an entrepreneur, and a podcaster himself. And his name is Mark Taltert. Mark, did I get it right? Really good. Yeah. Okay, good. (laughs) Mark is coming to us from the Netherlands. And we're talking today about stoicism. But in particular, Mark, I want to open up this big conversation with you about how to handle the chaos in our lives and still find peace and fulfillment and be going for our dreams. And Mark is no better of an expert as anyone in the world on this topic. So welcome to the show, Mark. Thank you for having me, Leah. Thank yes, you. you have a very interesting story, and I know you're you're doing a lot of public speaking now. You have a popular TED Talk. You have your new book out, which is called The Stoic Mindset, and you have in your short life, I, I would assume you're what middle age, so that's pretty short. Yeah, forty three. Yeah, in your short life, yeah. you have accomplished a great deal of just you know everyday accomplishments, but then this gold medal winning Olympic medal. It's just amazing. Thank you. So it took something special from you. And that's why I wanted to have you on the show because you didn't just set out and win a gold medal. It took you years to get it. And Mark, I'm going to jump right to the intro of your book. You guys, his book is really fantastic. The Stoic Mindset, uh, Living the 10 Principles of Stoicism. And you start out by saying it took you 12 years to achieve two minutes of your work. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that it's it's such a grabber, but it's it's just a reminder of the tenacity that we need, but also the amount of energy and work our dreams can take for it doesn't matter if it's two minutes or two years or you end up fulfilling, you know, the rest of your life in a job. So I want you to tell us about that. Why mm-hmm. did it take you 12 years? Well, to- it took me 12 years. Actually, uh, an Olympic period is, of course, four years. We have a span of four years. So when I was a young talent, uh, as a skater, uh, and here in Holland, skating is pretty popular. It's a big sport. I was heralded as the new champion, the young speed skater, and I was training for the Olympics of 2002. I missed it particularly because I put a lot of pressure on myself. Uh, my parents were going through a divorce, uh, and I wanted to prove myself, but kind of in the wrong way. Like I've trained myself. I overtrained myself. I was fleeing into the one thing I think I could control. Uh, the solution to my problems was working harder, training harder, and that backfired. So I missed out on the Olympics of 2002. And again, I trained for four years and then I missed out on the Olympics of 2006 also. Um, and then I, by then I had a great coach and things were lining up. Um, but I had some personal issues and struggles, which I write about in my book. And that had everything to do with the fight I had with my father. So I was not in peace with myself. I was training hard. Uh, and the things I learned was right. Like in your intro, you already said, it's like, how can you combine that driven part of yourself that wants to accomplish goals, that ambitious part with peace of mind. And I really had to learn that in the last four years, uh, leading up to the Olympics in Vancouver. So It took me 12 years, and that was the first time I started at an Olympic Games. So I was already a professional athlete for around 12 years, reaching, trying to reach my goals, and it still backfired. I couldn't get it right. So I think of life as sort of a piece of a a puzzle, or it's a puzzle, and you put pieces together. The older you get, the more you learn, and I think wiser you get. So for me, Stoicism, Stoic philosophy, and grew a uh, school of uh, Greek philosophy originated 300 BC was a big part of combining a sort of mindset, which in trying to reach my goal, an Olympic gold medal. And on the other hand, uh, use my way of thinking uh, as a, really in a practical sense to 
to to find relief to find peace with myself uh, and that's what everything you know, all these pieces came together in 2010 right before the olympics uh, in vancouver in, in which i won gold in one minute 45 seconds so actually it's less than two minutes less than two minutes <laughs> yeah. Well, the reason I mentioned in the intro that I normally don't have people like you on my show is because, you know, you're a professional athlete. I've had I've had a different TV show where I have professional musicians and actors and authors and so forth. But on this show, not so much. However, it can't be uh, it can't be argued that people like yourself and actors as well, people in the public eye, more so people who are competing for something at a massive scale. There's so much that goes into and the experience that you've had in that competition. And even if we don't think of it as a competition, just living your life, but the things you have to face and endure and deal with from rejection to the tenacity to keep going when you don't feel like it, to self-worth issues, to yep. focus, to you know, mind, body, health. There is so much at a level that most people can't understand. In fact, I think it's so terrifying to many people that it stops them from really trying to achieve their dreams. And yes. so that's really, I mean, I'm interested in stoicism for sure. And I want, I want us, we're going to dive there in just a moment, but that's really why I wanted to have you on the show because you're yeah. an example of that. I think that's uh, the key part uh, in living your life. It's, it's not only, of course, professional sports is about winning, um, but it's way more about, I think, challenging yourself, you know, aiming high, dreaming big, setting the bar high makes you want to get out there to take risks. And if you take risks and get out there, you will encounter obstacles, you will encounter setbacks. And I think that's the beauty of life because that's how you learn how the world works and how you, how you yourself work, you know, you learn so much about yourself. Uh, about your instrument, yourself, your mind, your body, and that all has to connect. Yeah. Um, and if that connects, that's when you can embrace life more. Uh, I had to learn a lot of things the hard way uh, and not by training hard. That's what every athlete does. That's what every entrepreneur does. You have to work hard, train hard to get somewhere to reach your goals, of course. But there's, I think, some courage and some um, really openness and authenticity need it to 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 get to know yourself to go past that uh that 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 part of yourself that's looking for comfort that's looking for for safety etc which is really normal for us as human beings but the beauty lies yeah at the border of that to right. go out there and you have to do that as an athlete or else you won't will not accomplish your goals and as a human being too you know you can I can push away my problems with my parents, which I had. I can push away problems with pressure, which I have. Uh, that's not the right way to go about it because you push things away. Uh, you have to take a, a look inside yourself and see that a lot of things come from your own judgment, from your own perspective. And to look at that perspective, um, I think that's a beautiful way to look at life. Yes, it is. I also want to add just, you know, I agree with everything you just said, and, and we do have to work hard. We have to show up for ourselves, you know, and that yeah. working hard can kind of be a phrase that people end up abusing as a form of self-punishment, yeah. you know, at the end. Yeah. I talk a lot about trust, you know, trusting ourselves, mm -hmm. trusting the universe, yeah. trusting divine order, trusting uh, when things aren't meant for us. And part of that willingness to reveal yourself your courage your character your skill your talent your heart you also have to trust that it's not for everyone or not for every instance and you know when i was reading uh, part of your book about when you didn't make the first uh, olympic yep. trial yeah i think so many people can relate that over pushing yourself trying to prove something trying to uh, show the world that you're worthy you know yeah yeah when it reminded me when I was um, uh, going on auditions in Los Angeles and New York as an actress, you know, mm -hmm. not that I, I've always, I've always done and I've always wanted to do media. So it's been part of my world, but there was a certain kind of ego that was driving me in those times. And I yeah. really wasn't interested in the work. I was interested in what would come out of 
yeah. you know, being seen yeah, or the fame. award. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, oftentimes for me too. when we're 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 kind of you know butt up against that desire or that need to, for validation, it's not delivered, you know, something comes in the way. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of the paradox, right? Right. Uh, we all have an ego. We all want to accomplish things, but if that, that outcome becomes the goal, uh, it really hurts your performance too. So it's not wise to think in this way, because I think it can drive you to put a lot of work in, put a lot of effort in, but uh, it can also make you make terrible choices. Uh, before the Olympics in 2002, I had a an American coach who taught me to dream big, and that was wonderful. Uh, I'd rather dream big than find out 10, 10 things I wake up with every day why it don't work. So I love that big dream. But on the other hand, I was fooling myself. When I was overtrained and I watched the Olympics in 2002 in front of a television set lying sick on the couch, mm -hmm. I was out whole winter and i thought this is crazy right how can we fool ourselves we think as human beings that we can control every outcome you know we work hard we control the outcome and it doesn't work like that there's much more beauty in accepting your fate or uh, working with your own nature uh, but still only and that's what the stoics would say and i agree with them focus on your internal state of mind that's what's up to you and for me i didn't focus on that so i was I thought that was crazy. I thought that working seven days a week as an athlete, two, three times a day training meant I became a better skater and win an Olympic gold medal. I thought of my competitors as, oh, they take rest days. They take days off. They're weak. <laughs> They're weak. I can beat them. I can beat them by a long shot. No problem. But that was, of course, the pressure on my shoulders. I, I got a lot of interviews here in Holland. I signed a big contract with a lot of money. Um, but... I was still a kid in 20 years old and I was still living at home with my parents who were fighting each other day in, day out. They went through a divorce uh, and me being the oldest, uh, I have two younger brothers. I tried to step in between my father and my mother. And the more I did that, the worse it seemed to get and the more it hurt me. So there was no peace. There was no relief in my life. I only went back to uh, the one thing I could control, I thought, train harder, just train harder. There's issues in my life, just work them out. Yeah, and work them out, not work them really out, but work harder so you can perform better so you will reach your goals. And it almost really uh, uh, killed me, actually. My mother was a nurse. She warned me about it. She said, Mark, you're not doing well. I, I was going pale. My heart rate was uh, going in all directions. So that's when I... Yeah, life took a different turn and I had to take a step back and reflect. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't train, but I could learn. So that's when I read a lot of text and things that helped me. I looked for help. Uh, and that's where I find the beauty in, in, in stoic text and philosophy texts. I thought, hey, Marcus Aurelius has a beautiful text. The impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. And this is a Roman emperor uh, who is taught in stoic philosophy, who uses life philosophy to deal with setbacks, to deal with the pressure being the emperor of the Roman empire. So I thought that's a beautiful way of looking at obstacles, right? Not as the end of the path, as right. the end of the road, like my overtraining is not the end of my career, but it's an obstacle to face. And it's a challenge for me to not make the same mistakes and to learn. So that's where I, that's where for me, the, for me, the beauty lies. I, I, Never have thought about that when I would have won a gold medal when I was 20, 21. I would have loved to, but I had to learn a lesson. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's part of what I was mentioning, like the the courage and the tenacity that you found within yourself. And and I do believe all things happen for a reason, you know, and, and here you mm -hmm. are with a mission and a purpose to help other people in a different yes. kind of way. Uh, I want to focus just a moment on stoicism itself, because yeah. I remember studying it or reading it when I was probably in college, I took some interest in it somehow. Mm -hmm. I, I believe a lot of people may be confused about what it is. So it's not really a religion. It's not really, it's it's almost like poetry sometimes. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, is it principles? Is it a mindset? What do you, how do you classify yeah. it? No, I think it's a life's philosophy. So it's not a, a, a faith based, actually. It's it's really life philosophy. So for me, stoicism isn't, it, there's not one life hack or one principle. It's 
an integral part uh, philosophy. So there are, I, in my book, The Stoic Mindset, I write about 10 principles, but they, yeah, they are interwoven with each other, actually. Mm -hmm. So what Stoicism is not, it's not like being emotionless, like Stoic uh, in English and also in the Dutch worldly sense sometimes means. Uh, it's yes, we encounter emotions. Yes, we deal with the things life throw at us, but we have the capacity to think about this in another way. We are rational human beings. So when something happens, um, we get shook. But what do these emotions tell us? We can reflect on that. Uh, am I angry? But is that the fault of the other person uh, making me angry? Or is it the fault of, or it, has it got something to do with my judgment? Where does this come from to question yourself about this? Mm -hmm. And also, uh, I think a big part of stoicism is that we are a part of a social structure where human beings who are part of nature, part of the cosmos, as the as the Stoics would say, yeah, we're all part of the same world with where we're interconnected as human beings. Right. Um, we work together as human beings as the limbs of a body do, uh, the Stoics would say. So I think it's a beautiful life philosophy, which makes you uh, reflect um, and, and makes you look at life in a different way. So no, we don't control the outcomes. Yes, we control the input, our inner state of mind. Uh, we have to accept the reality life throws at us. We have, have to accept our fate and not even accept it, but even love it, which mm -hmm. I write in my mm -hmm. fifth uh, principle, right? That's, I think, the challenge. And that's not something you say to yourself. It's like, oh, just do this because it's really hard, right? Uh, I, I speak to people who are, or are, who are sick uh, or you can speak to people who go through a really rough time in their lives or have a really yeah, big burden on their shoulders and that's their fate. Um, but the only logical solution is that if you want to live your life and find fulfillment, uh, you have to find a way to accept the reality. And if you can even love that reality, because, because that's loving life, right. there's no other way. There is no other life. This is what lies in front of you. And we want that to change, right? We want, we think we have the capacity of gods. <laughs> yeah, I know. We can control if we work harder, if we do this, et cetera, et cetera. And yes, you can work hard. Because that's great. It's your role. You have responsibilities. You want things to be accomplished. That's great. But you don't have the capacity to master the outcome like a god. Mm -hmm, right. Uh, and I think that's where a lot of yeah, the Stoics would call it eudaimonia, where a lot of inner uh, peace comes from. If you do that, you don't have to fight yourself and you don't have to fight with your negative emotions. You can reflect on your negative emotions try to see where they come from and you can find peace of mind. So you can, and so you can enjoy life more. There's right. more joy in life when there's less negative emotions. There's more joy in life. Uh, if you can face hardship and deal with that. And that doesn't mean life is not hard or there's no hardship. No, there is. But if you look at it in a different way, uh, there's still beauty in there. There still can be joy in there. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I, and it's important to note, I think, for people listening that you can practice stoicism, even if you have a whatever spiritual practice you have, you know, it's yes. not, it's not in conflict with the other. I think one of the reasons oh. I resonated with it so much before is the, it's very practical. It is very, yeah. in fact, I, I wasn't aware of it when I was writing my last book, but I think there's several philosophies in my last book that kind of align very much so with the principles of stoicism. And I would say, if you look at any major, probably religion and so forth, there's little tenets that are similar, but stoicism kind of cuts right to it in a more logical way. And, yeah. um, and so I hear you call it a, a philosophy. And I would also say to me, it feels just like a, a perspective, like an over overwhelming perspective of life in, in a sense. Yeah. yeah, it is, it is, yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah, a lot of, uh, I think a lot of uh, faith, also Christianity uh, finds a lot of base in Stoicism. Mm -hmm. And the Stoics actually, when we, we, we are connected as a whole, right? The Stoics really believe that, that it's not dogmatic. It's not right. like we have a God tells, that tells us what to do. No, God is in ourselves, in human nature, in the cosmos. So we're all part of this. So to uh, conflict with another human being or to do wrong to one another, that's doing wrong to the world, right? That's doing wrong to uh, the, the 
the the interconnectedness of us as human beings. So yeah. I think doing wrong it's to not yourself. An individual, yeah, it's not an individual individual life help philosophy. I think sometimes that's a mis misconception of stoicism. Uh, there is a lot of <laughs> internal growth progress in stoic philosophy, but it's always connected to the whole. It's always connected to other people, to uh, a community of people we are all right. part of. Right. I'd like to ask you, and I know you've probably been asked this a million times, when you were about to start that race that you won, yeah. what principle did you use and or what thoughts were going through your head that were maybe just, maybe they were terrible thoughts, maybe they were whatever. So can you share yeah, with yeah. us? Do you remember? Yes, I remember vividly. Well, if you're standing in front of uh, the audience at an Olympic start, there are millions of people uh, looking at you right through television cameras. You've trained for this for 12 years. So you can imagine that the next chance you will be getting to skate at an Olympic Games is four years later. Mm -hmm. So the pressure is really intense. And what happens a lot of times is that you think about the end goal. You think, oh, I'm here for gold, etc. But then you live in your mind. So... I write it down in my book as principle three, win by not focusing on winning. Mm -hmm. If we think about the result, think about winning, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves because if you really think about it in a stoic sense, winning is not up to us. And that seems like a paradox, right? Winning is not up to us. What do you mean? Right. <laughs> I race, I do my best and I win, right? Yes, but they're competitors and that's not up to you what they do. They can be better today. There's journalists, uh, journalists who write things about me, uh, I could not like that or ask questions I don't like. That's not up to me. What these people in the stands think about me or behind the television set watching me think about me, that's not part of my business. That's not what's up to me, as Epictetus would say. Epictetus was a famous Stoic philosopher, and he says, all things can be divided in two categories, that which does lie within the boundaries of our control and that which does not. And I think... That thought runs through my mind also right before Vancouver. Because if you think that athletes right before a start think, oh, let's do this. I enjoy it. No, of course you don't. It's really scary. You feel terrified. But you've trained for this. And feeling fear, that's, that's, you, that's human nature. We feel fear. If we do something uh, and aim high, we do something which really means a lot to us. We feel fear. But you can counter that fear with courage. So what I really thought of this and what I really talked myself into is like, of course, this is hard. Of course, you feel fear. But if you put courage next to that, that doesn't mean you don't feel fear. It means, yes, you feel fear, but you still act. You go back to the one thing that you can control, as the Stoics would say, and that's your internal state of mind. So I can be courageous. When the gun goes off, I can be courageous. I don't think about winning. I don't think about gold medals. I think about showing courage. When a gun goes off, I give everything I have. I sink my teeth in and I'll never let go. That's the mindset I adopt when I start. And then you have to trust the process, trust on your training, trust on the people you work with. Um, and that's really what I try to do. And then you keep calm, or at least you find calmness in the storm. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's not only in an Olympic final, right? That's when you find a lot of chaos in your life or a lot of challenge or setbacks. And I encountered that too. I always get back to that thought, hey, what, what do I control? And what, can I, what do I not control? What, what is my internal state of mind? Do I, am I showing courage? Um, do I feel the fear? Or where does this come from? So that's really uh, what I trained myself to, to do before the start of that Olympic race. Mm. I love that you said um, that you, in the conversation in your head, that you said, of course you're scared. Of course you feel this fear. I think yeah. one of the downfalls, a lot of people, not downfalls, but one of the mistakes or not helpful things a lot of people do is when they feel something like that fear, they try to tell themselves, don't be afraid. Don't <laughs> feel like this. You, you know, you're bigger than this or what have you. And in a, in a very simple way, what you just share with us is that you validated for yourself. Yes. Of course you feel like that. And that's 
what I share with clients all the time as well is we have to learn to validate for ourselves the authentic feelings that are going on in the moment so that we don't have the negative feelings that get stored yeah. up and so forth, right? But when you yeah. validate that and then you add this other component of, of, of course, I feel this. Yeah. And can I apply courage? Can I apply something different here as well? Yeah, well, this is this is a key point, I think. We push feelings away or say to ourselves, we cannot feel this. But that's actually denying reality, right? Reality, because right. that's what Stoics also would say. We have judgment, right? We think emotions are bad or are good, mm -hmm. uh, and that is a problem because you can think of fear as bad. I right. cannot feel fear. That's bad, or it, I cannot fail. That's bad. So you put a lot of weight on these negative emotions, and Stoics would say, "Why do you judge these emotions? They're not good or bad. Mm -hmm. They're there, right? And they're." They are there. Fear is there because, of course, I want to win a gold medal. That's my yeah. goal. I don't want to become in last or fourth or yeah. fifth. That's not what I've trained for for 12 years. Of course, I feel fear that that might go wrong. But when I keep thinking of that outcome or not want or not getting that outcome, then I, I get stuck in yes. that fear. If I'm stuck, yes. I won't skate fast. Right, exactly. <laughs> if I'm free, I will skate fast. So the freedom comes from here. From yes. your internal state of mind. Yes. Thank you so much for reiterating that. Um, okay. So your book, The Stoic Mindset, Living the Ten Principles of uh, Stoicism. I really love the images and graphics that are in the book as well. It's uh, it's really fun and it helps the reader along in your personal stories. But before we end today, I just wanted to go over, I don't know, one or two. What you've already mentioned about accepting your fate and about yeah. judging less and the adversity and so forth. What about the principle death makes life epic? Yeah. Yeah. Tell I think, uh, <laughs> well, if something ends something that th then, you know, something is really worthwhile. You, you know, it, of course, in all philosophy, death is a major issue in life. Death is a major issue. If you look at it, it's absurd. We live here. We try to do our best. Then we die. I know like the stoic. Yeah, the Stoics would really think of this like well, you can be a king or you can be a slave. We can't tell the difference between your bones when you die, right? right? All you do, all you put up with, all your challenges and your aspirations, they're gone. And you can feel fear about this like, oh, I have to show up because I got a couple of years left. Uh, th that perspective actually of death uh, is great to live an epic life. And what I mean by that is if you think, about death or it's a really a, a good way to minimize regret so if you think you're at the end of your life and hopefully that will take a long time and you're old and gray and maybe a hundred years old and you look back at today do you do the things today that are worthwhile do you do the things that fit you fit your character do you show up in a great way do you really live the life you think is best to live because the greatest regret comes from people who live their lives for others or what others thought of them to do, what was best to do by others, not for themselves. So I think thinking of death is thinking of when you're at your deathbed and you look back at today, uh, and that can be any day, the Stoics would say, right? If we right. live tomorrow, that could not be up to us. Mm -hmm. um, so think about that today. And that's not a thought of fear or of like, oh shit, I have to do everything right today. No. That can be a great contemplation, I think, um, to 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 make choices or to make wise choices in your life. Yes, I agree. In that same way of judgment of the, of the emotions, for example, we judge yep. living as good and death is bad. We judge if you die at 50, it's bad. If you die at 20, it's bad. If you live yeah. to 100, it's good. And yeah. the reality is, is none of that matters. And, you know, no. it doesn't really matter. But when you can look at death, I agree. I think so many people forget that we're going to die. You know, it's like yeah. these, yeah. I used to be terrible at making small decisions. In fact, I remember talking to this therapist one time. I was young. I was in my twenties. I didn't have any mm. money. I didn't really know what I was doing. And I was like, I really want to do this thing, but it's like a hundred dollars, you know? And I don't know if I should spend the hundred dollars if it's going to be okay. And I was just yeah. so afraid. And we had this conversation about kind of almost setting an intentionality for myself of giving myself permission to live fully if I 
trust that, you know, I'm not going to blow it all in one, one thing. Where's yeah. the value there? And that conversation changed my life, but it's very much like what you're saying. It's like this death becomes a motivator in a certain way. Yeah. And um, kind of a, just, you know, get shit done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Way, right. Yeah. And, and, and do the things you find worthwhile, really think about this, right? If, if you die, who is there with you? Is it, is it that gold medal you take with you or the Porsche or the dream or the, no, of course not. That's not what life means. Life, an epic life is uh, living through your own principles, your own values, doing the things you love to do, find worthwhile to do with others. Mm -hmm. And the Stoics have beautiful quotes, of course, of death. Seneca says, let us go to sleep with joy and gladness. And let us say, I have lived the course which fortune set for me is finished. Mm -hmm. So every day, that's a contemplation you can have every day, actually. I try to do that every day. If you go to bed and sleep, let's say, hey, I did something great today. And it can be small, right? It doesn't have to mean something big. It can be really small, uh, giving your kid a hug or uh doing something for somebody else or or working on uh, a text to uh, a book you will want to write within 10 years even or or it can be all these things right uh, so don't get caught up in life like ticking boxes next making the next day next day next day getting in, in a sort of operational modus operandi before you know it you don't reflect on the things you do right you have yeah. 10 forests and you have to chop down the trees in one forest. You have to choose the forest. Don't go chopping out there and see where you end up. You first have to choose which path you will choose, what forest you will the, chop the trees down, right? So first reflect on that. Think about that. What do you want to do? Why do you want to do this? Yes, that's great. So for those listening, if you're interested in this um, stoicism or this kind of philosophy, of course, check out uh, Mark's book, The Stoic Mindset. But my last question for you is mm -hmm. a lot of other philosophies, spiritual practices, whatever they have, you know, people think that they are, for example, Christian, or they are Buddhist, or they mm -hmm. are mindful, or they are spiritual because they are meditating or because they're reading the, the scripture or because they are praying yep. or because they're writing in a journal. Yeah. And we know that those things don't make us spiritual or Christian no. or Buddhist or what have you, but their representation. So for a stoic or in stoicism, how do you practice stoicism every day? Do you memorize a couple of your favorite tenets for like a month and practice those out? Or do you have a ritual before mm -hmm. bedtime where you? Yeah, something? no, I'm, I'm, I'm actually not really that routine based. Uh -huh. So I, I think more freely what, what comes up. I work every day. I, th when I wake up, I think about wow, what, what I want to do, what's important. So I, I say hello to my kids, my wife, when we are eat breakfast together, when I go to bed, I sometimes contemplate, like, what does it mean to be at the end of your life and look back at today? Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't try to, I'm not dogmatic about that, or I don't follow my life with a fixed set of rules every day. Like, oh, if I do this, if I do that, if I do this, if I do that, I think it's more intuitive for me. So I learn about Stoicism. I read a lot about the text. And what I find beautiful is that Marcus Aurelius was an emperor. Epictetus was born as a slave. Seneca was an orator and a speech writer and a, a senator. So these are people, uh, Zeno, the founder of Stoicism, was uh, an entrepreneur, actually. So these people were not like, um, like they expressed a faith or were only philosophers mm -hmm. they were practitioners right they their way of thinking they put it into work into action mm -hmm. uh, and they showed what they were made of by acting out you can talk about it i can write books about it you can say you want to do this but actually what does that mean yes it means maybe you've learned a lot of great texts uh, you read a lot of books. Well, that's good for you. Great. But right. what do you do with them? How do you put these things into action? That's what counts, actually. Epictetus would say you can you can be a carpenter and you can build up a house and you can or you can say to people, wow, I'm really good at building houses. I'm a great carpenter. Epictetus would say, show us you can build a great house, right? You don't have to say it. Show it. Yeah. Um, 
It's very and much an action based yeah. or seeing the result in the actions, correct? Yeah, exactly. And that's not like, oh, I'm a great stoic because I follow these rules. No, <laughs> yeah. there's nothing like this. Like I'm a great Christian because I believe in God. Yeah. Well, maybe you're a great Christian or a great Muslim or a great Buddhist. Show us uh, that's, that's actually what it means. And that's what makes yeah. it a practical philosophy. Yeah. It's actually one of my biggest pet peeves when people start trying to find um, grades of value in spiritual in their spiritual life, like they're a good Christian or a bad, you know, someone is more spiritual. And it's this thing of let's just be, we are, we are, we just are the thing, you know, we are spiritual beings. We are, we have the capacity to have a deepened yeah. relationship or an intentional practice of some sorts, but Exactly. Yeah. yeah. If I can, I, I have an example with my father when I, in 2006, I, I really was angry at my father uh, because I didn't have spoken to him for six years. I haven't spoken to him for six years because I blamed him for the divorce of my parents. So mm. I really blamed him. Right. So it can be righteous. Well, I'm a great stoic or I'm a great person, but I'm really angry at my father because he's the source of all my anger. Uh, and I thought, wow, that's not, that's pretty unstoic. Right. Uh, I don't want to live my life like this, like this, this comes, the anger comes from my judgment of my father. I think he's a bad father, but I, am I a better father 20 years down the road? Mm -hmm. Or do I know what it means to have not any contact with your sons for six years? No, I don't do that. So I don't know that. So instead of judging him, it's wiser to yeah, let him back into my life to forgive or to, to, to connect again. So I connected with my father again and not by judging him, but by letting him back in, uh, ask questions and yeah, reconnect. And that for me was a relief that for me, lift, lift a, a burden off my shoulders. I could just drop that burden off my shoulders. Uh, and my father was there four years later in the Olympics when I won Olympic gold. So mm. I wasn't angry anymore. Mm -hmm. That was a way better yeah, way to live for me yeah. it opened such a broader perspective in life. And that's what I want to teach with my book too. You know, the, the anger that there is or the fear or it's inside you. Right. Um, and it's hard to confront that. It's not easy. It's really hard. It's really hard. But yeah. it is possible yes. to look at yourself and look at your own judgment yes. to, towards these things. And if you can let go of that, the, I think your world and, if we all do that, the whole world uh, will be a better place. Yeah, I do too. Well, as we've determined, you cannot control everything, but you can oh. find peace and um, a different way to live through the chaos of life. And I really appreciate your work. And Mark's book is a stoic mindset. And also mine is overcoming toxic emotions. Mark, I hope you pick up a copy someday. Yeah, um, yeah. And all of Mark's information will be on the website or on the show notes here. So Go check that out. I think you'll enjoy that book very much. Certainly a valuable tool set to have or valuable tools to have in your toolbox, as we say, you know? Yeah. So Mark, I really appreciate your time and congrats on not just winning the gold medal. I mean, that's a great achievement, but truly your, um, your life lived after that fact has been the real success in my eyes anyway. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me, uh, Leah. Yeah. And to everyone listening, we will see you next week on the Modern Sage podcast. And don't forget to follow on social media, Leah the Modern Sage, or go to my website, leahguy.com. Everyone take care and we'll see you real soon.